Okay, boys and girls. Um, let's look at the directions. You should have a highlighter and a pencil or pen to write with. The first one is rounding, so please make sure that you round to that underlined digit. The second one is also rounding. Don't forget that there's a decimal point there. And this one's a little tricky. Oh, huh, thank you. Good thing someone else is here and not just me. Name the place value of the underlying digit. Name the value of the underlying digit. Write the number in word form. Include hyphens and commas when needed. Don't forget what that decimal point says. Solve for X, or solve for Y when X is equal to seven. Remember we do what is in the parentheses first. And then you're gonna wanna go back and double check your work. <clears throat> okay, now solve the following problem. You cannot use the standard algorithm when naming the four partial products. So because it's asking you to name the partial products, you need to either use an area model, that would probably be the easiest, or partial quotients, or the distributive property, to do 82 times 78. Okay, and then the product is just when you add all four partial products together. Ethan, do you have a question? Um, does it matter um, what order you put the numbers? I will not, no, nope, it doesn't matter, because it just depends on which factor you put on the left and which factor you put on the right. Addition, this one is subtracting and check. I took multiple points off last week's spiral because people did not add back to check. Multiplying, okay, and there's a decimal, and look at that, four digits by two digits. Don't forget the dollar sign and decimal point in your answer. Remember to multiply first as if the two numbers were whole numbers. Count the amount of decimal numbers in the problem. Place the decimal point in your answer so that you have the same amount of decimal numbers in the problem. Okay, if you need help with that, you want to turn this in before Friday. Division and rounding to the nearest cent. Hint, if you run out of numbers, what do you add to the dividend? If you are rounding to the nearest cent, how far do you need to go in your dividing? This one is tricky, and I think that I'm going to help you set it up. Okay? If you run out of numbers, what do you add to the dividend? Okay, let's go ahead and set this one up. Okay, I'm going to pretend that that decimal is not there, and I'm going to say that seven can go into 8,000, 1,000 times. And I'm gonna go ahead and subtract out 7,000, which I know is really, this is really gonna be 10.00, right? And now I have 1158. 7 times 2 is 14, so that's too big, so I'm going to put it in there 100 times, which is the same as if I put my decimal back in, 7.00. And now I'm left with 458. 7 can go into 45 6 times, because 7 times 6 is 42. Pardon me. And I'm down to 38 cents. Seven can go in there five times. And that is going to leave me with three cents. So when I add together my partial quotients, I am ending up with $11.50.
and 65 cents. This would leave me with another 0.03, so it should be 68 cents, $11 and 68 cents. Now, let's multiply back to check. I'm off, so it should not be three more cents. Yeah, it should be. Hold on. Hold on. Seventy-six. It's eighty-one fifty-five. I'm doing something wrong. Yes, Nolan. Yeah, that was the four twenty. No, because the point three was really the remainder. So it's point three. And what you're really going to have to do is add the zero. And I didn't think that Mrs. Campbell was throwing that on our um, spiral. So we're going to go through it and do it one more time. Okay? Because, um, Mason, I apologize, but it's just like real math class when sometimes we have to figure it out, even if you weren't, even if you were here. Right? So, I'm going to do this one in my red notebook. You might want to as well because it's going to take up a little bit more space. Poor Mason has to go through and do it with us. I'm glad we're doing this one together. Okay. And I've noticed the area that I'm leaving because... What you add to your dividend when you cannot multiply anymore is a zero. And we already know that we're going to have to add one zero, and then we'll be able to round it to the nearest penny. Does that make sense? So we, I will show you that. And we're just going to totally pretend that decimal point is not there. And then I'll show you what to do with the decimal. So we're still going to go with seven can go into 8,000, 1,000 times, and we're going to subtract 7,000. Then we're gonna go into seven, can go into 1158, 100 times, and we're going to subtract 700. Then seven can go into 458, 60 times, which is going to be 420. You want me to put the subtraction sign in there? Well, since it's repeated subtraction. Seven can go into 38 five times, which leaves me with three. And now I'm adding my zero to my dividend. Seven can go into 30 how many times? Four times, which is 28. And that leaves me with two. I, do, I could continue to add that zero, okay, and continue to subtract that out. But I don't have to because I only have to round to the nearest penny. So now when I add these, it's 1,000. 100, I'm going to put my decimal point, 65, and then the next digit is a 4. Because once we add the 0, we're going to the next place value, the thousandths. So when I look to the right, what is that going to round up to? If I'm rounding to the nearest penny, that's the hundredths place. What will it round up to? Harper. 6. So our answer is $11.66. And now if I multiply back to check, I should be pretty close to $81.58. And I'm still at $81.62 because we're rounding. Yes. 
Right, but instead of saying remainder three, because we're rounding, that's what we had as well, but because we're rounding, we're gonna go ahead and figure the next decimal point, so we have to round it up. Wait a minute, it shouldn't be. Sally, 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 should round that up. I'm sorry, Mason. What should that say, 11 what? That four doesn't mean to round it up. 1165. And that's to the nearest penny. And you can't really multiply back to check because it has more, you're gonna keep dividing and you could keep going on and on and on yeah. to farther decimal points. You guys have done this on a calculator. Okay, and look how many decimal points there are. Okay, because it's not evenly divisible by seven. So you're rounding to the nearest hundredth or the nearest penny, which leaves you at 11 and 65 cents. That four says to leave that a five. And it won't multiply back to check because of all those decimal points. If you go 11 and 65 cents, you're gonna be under 81.58 when you multiply back to check. And if you go 11.66, you're gonna be over 81.58 when you multiply back to check. Okay, so that's a really tricky one. And I'm sorry this video is so long, but I think it's important to show that we learned something new here. Okay, when you're rounding, you can't multiply back to check. Alec, are you with me? Okay, so that was a lot. I'm glad we did that one together. Go ahead and put your answer in the blank. $11.65. We went through and made an error. And then we figured that one out. Okay. <laughs> you should have gotten it on Friday. That should be in your red math folder. Okay, don't forget to generate an equivalent fraction for each. Show the fraction for, for one that you're using to find the equivalent fraction. So five sevenths. So you're just doing an equivalent fraction. So you can do 5 sevenths times 2 over 2, 3 over 3, and what's your equivalent fraction? Here is where you need to show the what you are multiplying by. So if you want to multiply by 2, then what would your fraction be? What would your fraction be, Avery? 10 fourteenths. Okay, if you wanted to multiply by 3, your fraction would be 15 21st. Here you're going to divide. What is something that 12 and 15 can both be divided by to come up with an equivalent fraction? Okay. Convert, this is where we had a typo. 3 fourths is equal to what decimal? 53 hundredths is equal to what fraction? And 8 and 7 tenths, you need to write it as a decimal. Not a mixed number, it's already a mixed number. Not on eight and seven tenths, it's a mixed number. Okay, these measurement ones we should be getting pretty decent at. Look in your planner on the reference page eight. You've been looking at it the last couple of weeks. The factors for 18 and the multiples for three. Don't forget the first multiple for three is, oh, I'm sure, the multiple is for six. The first multiple for six is six, yes. Oh yeah, needed. That's what it's supposed to say. It's like a horse, needed. Okay, here's our area. We did some examples like this last week and we've done it on our last two spirals. You need to find the area of the triangle using this formula, and the area of the rectangle using this formula and add them together. Draw line AB parallel to line segment CD. Pay attention to line and line segment. Put arrows, points, and letters where needed. Okay, and then here we have a table that shows the price of a large pizza at four local pizza places. 
How much more would I pay for three large pizzas at Chicago's than three large pizzas at Domino's? I want to pay the least amount of money for three large pizzas. Decide if Chicago's or Domino's has the better deal. If I tip the pizza delivery driver, driver $5, how much change would I receive from 40? Restate, answer, cite, and explain. I have to see this on a line sheet of paper or I will not grade it. You cannot shove your race response here. Now, let's think about it. Let's think about how many sentences. You're going to have a sentence to figure out the cost of the pizza at Domino's, the cost of the pizza at Chicago's, the adding on the tip, subtracting to get your change. That's four different equations. I think you can get this done in five sentences or less. Five sentences or less on this. Okay, you should be able to do this in five sentences or less. Okay, are there questions about this spiral? Okay, we'll take a vote. Should I re-record this video for Mason or should I make him sit through the torture you guys just got? Okay, raise your hand if you think I should re-record for him. Oh, sorry Mason, they all said we, you should have to sit through the torture they did.